So on page 37, he talks about Karl Marx and his idea of the inevitable material, the historical progress that is inevitable in this various materialism and this various these changes in economic systems, which inevitably end up with socialism. So uh, I'll just read a, a part of this. So he says that once upon a time teaches Marx the material productive forces were embodied in the shape of the hand mill, and then they arranged human affairs according to the pattern of feudalism. And then, of course, that means that you've got a king who rules a, a land, an area, and his serfs. And his serfs, of course, provide the labor for that land. So that's feudalism. So I'll continue. When, later, the unfathomable laws that determine the evolution of the material productive forces substituted the steam mill for the hand mill, feudalism had to give way to capitalism. Since then, the material productive forces had developed further, and their present shape imperatively requires the substitution of socialism for capitalism. Those who try to check the socialist revolution are committed to a hopeless task. It is impossible to stem this, the tide of historical progress. So, of course, this is Marx. This isn't really Marx's idea. This was Hegel's idea, actually, of the of an inevitable uh, pro, uh, historical progress. And, and then Marx put on the economic uh, idea. He flipped on the economic uh, use of that inevitable historical progress in terms of um, in terms of economics, in terms of these various systems that we're going through. And what's interesting is that there may be an, uh, a grain of truth here in terms of what capitalism might move into, but I don't think it's because of Marx's reasons. So, of course, we are moving into a more and more technology, and this is, of course, which is ironic, being exacerbated by uh, minimum wage laws as they rise. We're going to have more and more automation. And, and that's inevitable, by the way. Automation is inevitable. You might have even seen a McDonald's that are fully automated now, I think, in Japan or somewhere. At least they were testing them. I don't know if they're actually being used, but they were showing off what, they, what they've made. But this thing, this is inevitable, this automation of, of labor and raising the minimum wage by, well, you know, economically illiterate people is obviously just going to make this, uh, this happen faster when you... Uh, when you subsidize essentially businesses looking for alternatives to labor because you've raised the price of it, which is just silliness, but you would hope that people would learn a bit of economics, but obviously not. Um, what's going to happen is there's going to be all kinds of people that are low skill that are going to be replaced by automation. What do you do with those people? And it's not, and it's even worse than that because it's not as if, yes, for sure, some of them you can train to do other things. Some of them have the intelligence, at least the average intelligence, to do uh, more things. Like they, maybe you can make them an engineer or, or a uh, mechanic or someone who would maintain robots or b even build robots. For sure, there's a population that even now that do manual labor, that and there's those jobs would be replaced. You could retrain those people to do something that can't be replaced by automation. So sure. But there's still going to be an increasingly endemic population of people who cannot be trained to do higher things because of their abilities or intelligence or whatever it might be, and so would not be able to find work in a in a world in which more and more things are automated. Those people are going to be stuck. And that's why I'm saying that Marx has a grain of truth here in terms of socialism, in terms of people are not going to be able to work at all. They just, they just can't contribute, or at least their contribution is so minuscule to not really be worth anything in the free market. And there's where you get this idea that, okay, well, we, they have to survive or they're going to be thieves or they're going to, they're going, they're going to be uh, vandalists or riots or murders or something like that, right? Like that's it's funny. That's been kind of the historical, if you look at the historical reasons for uh, supporting the paupers, as it used to be called, it, it actually is because it's not this Christian ethic necessarily of, of doing good for the poor. It's actually a fear of, of riots. And for most of our most of, of human civilization, the, um, the the ruling classes have feared rebellion by the masses, and that's been always the essential reason to, in a sense, pay off uh, those people who might engage in that. And so, what Marx is saying, in other words, not his words, is that you're going to have a problem eventually with people who are really not able to contribute in a free market because of technology, which is such a it's such an ironic outcome, but it's something that we probably will have to deal with. This is why some people have been recently talking about a basic income, which is, again, essentially what we already have in terms of, a, uh, or you can call it a negative income tax. There's all kinds of different phrases for it. 
but it, it's still a similar thing in terms of uh, having some kind of, because you are human, is this, again, it's more of a status society. Because you are human, you deserve a certain amount of money. But again, of course, the reasons, as I'm saying, uh, as I'm saying is, is more because if you don't get that money, you will, you will get it another way, in a, a less civilized way. So we'll pay you off now, so to speak. But it is a problem that's looming with automation. And the solutions, of course, are what Marx is suggesting here, is that we just have a kind of um, redistribution of wealth. And you might have heard of the Zeitgeist, Pro uh, Zeitgeist Project, which is similar. They're essentially Marxist robots. And, that, or, I mean, they're Marxist, but they believe that robots will save us. And they just say that, well, we just have to coordinate everything centrally and have robots produce everything. But again, I don't think that has to be the solution. I, and I don't even think a basic income has to be the solution. I just think that given, I, I uh, want, well, before I get into that, one thing I'll just quickly say is that we have to make a decision here. Either we go the, the uh, Zeitgeist Project route and we centralize everything, which I think will be a disaster. But uh, unfortunately, the human race tends to learn the hard way. So, so either we go the Bernie Sanders route and we centrally plan everything, or we go the other route, which I hope ha happens. And that is we become more free market orientated. And what that will do is that will drive the cost down of everything and make essentially those who cannot work it would make even their bare, like most people can do something. Even those people who can do just barely something will be enough money to get by because things just get so cheap. So you can think of food becoming just so cheap if it's automated. Like even you can get, I don't know what it's like in the States, but you can get 10 pounds of potatoes really cheap. And that's, that's heavy. That's a heavy thing. I don't know. They don't make any money on that. But there's all kinds of examples of food already that's very cheap. And I just assume that given a freer society, if we can get to a freer society than we have now and not go the other direction, the Bernie Sanders direction, we can get a society in which things that essentially the bare subsistence of living is just so cheap. It's so inexpensive that even people who can barely get by on because they have no skills, essentially, and, and they're being replaced by robots and automation, even they can get by. I think that's going to be the solution. It, instead of a, a, a going back to a Soviet-style planning model, which hopefully Bernie Sanders people would read, but I think that will be the, the outcome. And we won't need to have a, a, a necessary socialism in terms of we all have to share everything now because there's a increasing part of our population which just simply can't contribute or, or barely can contribute. And certainly in a world like right now, they couldn't get by. But in the future, they will even less be able to to get by. But the only then solution is that the cost of living is just so inexpensive. The cost of living has to come down. So those, I think those are the only two outcomes. And I'd be interested to hear if you have any other ideas on that. But it seems like there's only two paths here, one good and one, and one bad. Either we centrally plan everything and share all the wealth, and then we get a Soviet-style lining up for bread, which has already happened. It'd be nice if we didn't have to do that again, but we might. Or the other solution is that we let the market go into overdrive, or not even that. We just let the market be free because it isn't free right now. It's the free market doesn't exist in the world. And we just let prices just get so inexpensive because of more efficiencies and less regulations and less, less whole departments of companies being devoted to lawyers and uh, people who comply with regulations and just all kinds of waste because of these government interventions in the economy. And we 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 don't bar competition, which we do right now. And that, of course, promotes monopolies. And there's all kinds of things that damage the efficiency of the market and make things more expensive. And then electing people like Donald Trump, uh, who are going to put tariffs on goods like that. That's not progress. That's re that's regressive. That's not going to help. That's just going to raise the cost of goods. So anyways, we have to make a decision here. And unfortunately, Donald Trump is not as bad as Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. But he's not he either, he's not moving in the in the right direction really either. He's just made maybe making a baby step towards the wrong uh, wrong path. Whereas Bernie Sanders wants to make a great leap into the wrong path. But um, but anyways, I don't think we have to have this inevitable Marxian model. But I think the fear of Marx I think was was correct in terms of we're going to get to a, a place where more uh, where less and less people can participate. And how do you deal with that? 